So we're gonna unbox one of these new Sonom XP5S phones. A couple of virtually useless inserts. The phone itself, SIM cards already put in, all cardboard, you know, cheap inserts. USB Type-C cable, charging block 1.5 amp, 5 volts. Back cover, battery, and they all come with a little screwdriver to get the uh, back cover put on. That's basically everything in the box. So the main thing we need are the cover and the battery. Pretty sure this is the same batteries that went in the old XP5s. They look identical. I'd have to check the model number on these things to see if it's exactly the same, but it looks identical to the old XP5. So put it in, make sure it's gonna come on. Battery lit up. I did one of these a little bit ago and the cover don't don't go on. They didn't go on as well easily as the one on the XP5 because the XP5 had four screw points. This one just has two. This one just has two with the with the little clips that you put these in. So you just kind of I had troubles with getting this thing popped in the corner. You have to actually put a little bit of a force uh, to get it kind of popped in place. It seems a little bit like a design flaw there, but kind of gets in there now. And one of the simplest ways I've found to get these screws in, um, started is to hold it really tight in place and then use your finger to just kind of spin that screw and get it started. They, in general, will spin a little bit to at least get it going. And then take your ever important mini screwdriver, chuck it to the side and use an actual receiver. Something with really weak battery powered thing. Alrighty. So defaults with the screen lock for my set, my purposes, I have to disable that because I have people that don't know how to use a screen lock anyhow. So first thing comes up, Sonom app key policy, PTT key assigned to an application named AT&T EPTT. Okay. Location consent, agree. Once we get wants me to set the default apps for the middle and the top. So when it comes from the uh, factory, it looks like they have the contacts, messaging, and then phone as the default apps that you can access from the, from the top, middle, and down arrows there. And then the left and right do different things. The missed events, if you press the right arrow, give, goes you to missed events. It's, uh, we had a missed message from um, AT&T uh, in regards to, you know, just thank you for choosing AT&T EPTT service. Uh, so exit out of that. When there's no missed events, you see the, the little coffee cup there. So back to the middle. If you press left, it goes to your quick settings. Uh, for, for my district, we keep the Wi-Fi disabled, of course. Bluetooth disabled. Data, of course, turned on. Uh, torches for flashlight, airplane mode, profiles. Um, from when I've tested these, the best place to keep it is set to the outdoor. Um, my particular application is on school buses, so it needs to be as loud as possible because buses are loud. Um, so I always set mine to the outdoor profile. And that's all you can access from the quick settings. So the next thing you do is press the top middle button that'll take you to your app um, app screen go to settings here this is going to be the more complete settings list so then I'm going to go down to display um, brightness level I'm keeping mine at about 52 percent I feel like that's bright enough that you can see it but um, not so bright that it's going to kill the battery quicker uh, press the back arrow to go back out of that come down to our sleep timer uh, we keep ours set at 30 minutes. The default is 30 seconds, uh, but we don't want the screen to go to sleep that quick. We want the screen to be visible at least for a little while um, after you've touched it. Because it is a clock, you can use it for other purposes as well. Font size, 
Um, I change mine down to it, it defaults to the you know standard default size. Small is really small, um, but I feel like large is is pretty good. The the ex, extra large or largest is uh, a little bigger than you probably need it. So large is good for my purposes. And then just click the back arrow. And that's pretty much all under the display. So then we go down to, let's see, yeah. This is a modified version of Android. So a lot of the settings look similar to the way Android does. Uh, not in functionality always, but at least somewhat looks similar. So you can go under network, look at Wi-Fi, mobile network, data usage, hotspot and tethering, uh, VPN, ethernet, Air, airplane mode. We'll go to connected devices. Again, this would be if you have something connected to it via USB or Bluetooth. We don't use either. Apps and notifications. Um, again, it's not something that we will use. Uh, battery. I don't believe there's anything interesting in this setting. So battery blink light. Not 100% sure what that means. Gives you some stats, last full charge, five minutes ago, screen usage, USB power saving, uh, sleep after 30 minutes of inactivity. So I guess again, you can access that from the battery menu as well. So we looked at display already sound. So again, we've already changed it, but the profile we've set to outdoor. For our purposes, again, we only use these as the push to talk network we don't use it for um, any of the other uh, potential uses such as a phone or you know a texting device so we keep our set um, under the sound settings here it, it does not really matter that much so um, media volume doesn't matter alarm ring uh, notification volume I might have something to do with the, the push to talk network I'm not hundred percent sure on that but I always keep that one uh, turned all the way up anyhow because you can adjust it from within the call menu anyhow um, vibrate for calls I disable that because you're never gonna feel it on the school bus anyways uh, ringtone is irrelevant uh, default notification sounds really is irrelevant for us too um, all the other default settings on here are okay nothing that needs to be changed storage uh, this is just showing what you have on the phone, just again like an like an Android storage application would show um, what's what's being used and where the memory is is being used up for what purposes, whatever. Uh, security and location. So this is one we will change. So again, to the screen lock, uh, we want that to be none, so that uh, in order for the driver to unlock the device, all they have to do is just press the the red uh, end call button and that'll turn the screen on as opposed to them having to press that and then to press and hold the, the star button. Um, other apps in or other um, settings in here, uh, nothing we need to really look at. Accessibility. change system program programmable key accessories languages gestures software update about the phone so if we come come up here from our our main menu and press the top left button we want to come down to home screen shortcuts okay so select that and this is where we can actually change those three uh, internal home screen set um, home screen shortcuts so up we want that to be our contacts that's fine um, navigation center key we want that to actually be our push to talk network so we're going to go into the menu here select AT&T EPTT and then for our da uh, navigation down key, we don't want that to be camera, or, so we'll just change that to settings so that we can quickly access the settings. So again, 
navigation up key is contacts, navigation center key is AT&T, AT&T, EPTT, and navigation down key is settings. So now when we go out, we can see that those are the three options. Still left and right are the same. You got your missed events and then your quick settings. But um, those are the three primaries that we're going to use anyways. There's a particular application that I'd like to find out about called Safeguard that was on the old Sonom XP5. We use it to keep the settings from being messed with by the drivers. We'll look through here and see if we see that Safeguard application somewhere in the background. Oh, there it is. Safeguard. The top button, top middle button to our app screen. So I had to do a little bit of digging and found that to access that safeguard application that I was looking at, we have to go through the app launcher. So we'll press the, the app menu here, and it's actually in this app called Sonom Scout. So then we see there's setup, utilities, support. So we're gonna go to the setups area here where it says safeguard. And we wanna activate this. So turn it on and put the pin, I'm assuming it's one, two, three, four. <laughs> and then for this, we're gonna restrict applications. So under app restrictions, applications restrict apps, feature restrict. And this is where we probably need to go. Again, it looks a little bit different on the XP5S than it did on the XP5, so I'm learning as we go. Applications. So we'll put in one, two, three, four. Okay. And yeah, so this is where we're gonna be able to put in. Um, you know, we don't really care if the drivers access most of this stuff. They don't need to be in the browser. Um, calendar, calculator, they can access that if they want. Contacts, of course, clock, of course, phone. Mm, yeah, I can leave that active. It doesn't really matter. Messaging, no need for them to go into that. Music is fine. Uh, so settings, definitely. And camera, the, it's going to be locked in place anyways, so we could disable that. It doesn't really matter. them out of the Sonom Scout as well. And so then we are going to, it used to be we would have to press this top button to save. Yeah, and it looks like it is the same way. So I'm going to click save. So there are some applications that are restricted. So we're going to change the pin as well. So I'm going to change the pin from one, two, three, four. And put in again, one, two, three, four. Okay, and so we've changed the pin. So now, in theory, when I go in here and try to press the down arrow to go into uh, applications, safeguard is active, and I'd have to enter my pin. One, two, three, four. Enter, wrong pin. But if I put the right pin in, Look at that, I can get into my settings. So that works well. So first impressions, I've actually had a handheld version of this model for a while. Uh, one thing that I do not like is the sound quality on these, just as a handheld, sound not very good. Compared to the old XP5, the sound quality is actually worse on these. Maybe my unit was bad, uh, but it did not sound good as a, as a standalone unit. As far as, uh, since I've now installed some of the kits on a few of our buses and tried it out in there, the sound actually is pretty decent through, through that system. Um, the other main thing that I have as a criticism of these is the old XP5s had, um, which are almost identical in size, very, very minimally smaller than the older one. Um, but the battery life on these was really, really long, at least as long as the battery wasn't faulty. You could, I, I could leave one of these and be in standby for days and days and days and it would be fine. It would still have a little bit of a charge. 
Uh, whereas my handheld that I have now, um, my my XP5S, I if I leave it in standby, it only lasts a day or two. Um, maybe that's expected. Maybe there's additional applications running in the background that are keeping the battery life from lasting longer. But that is a criticism I have of the newer model. Um, overall, I hope I hope that the uh, the new kit. Uh, that we're using with these is going to be a, an improvement. So far I am more impressed with the design of that kit because there's not additional plugs going into the top because that was again one of the criticisms I had of the old model was that in order for it to charge um, now again these are this is from the, uh, the advanced tech kits that we use on our, on our um, fleet but the cradle the foam kind of springs into place and locks down onto the charger which again they had a proprietary charger magnetic little cable again not my favorite design for that uh, but then it, it, it kind of slid in locked in place and then in order for it to charge you actually had to plug in a little headphone jack uh, into the top headphone port here and that actually grounded the unit to, to allow it to charge as well. Well, that obviously left a little loop up here. It was something that could get caught and broken, um, which we had many of them break over the last several years. This one uh, is a, a better design with the new phone. There isn't even a headphone jack on it at all. Um, it does use a USB type C connector, which is uh, obviously more readily available than just a proprietary connector that, that Sonom designed. Um, but this one actually locks in place sideways, goes in. There's no external wires other than the single wire that comes out of the bottom of the, of the cradle itself leading to the junction box. So that is one improvement. Um, so far I'm impressed with the sound quality as well. So time will tell. Time will tell if it continues to be that way. I hope you've enjoyed the assessment that I've, I've given of the, uh, the new XP5S sunk by, by Sonom. Uh, looks to be a pretty decent phone. I've always, uh, I've always been a, a kind of a defender of these, uh, the Sonom XP5. Uh, while we've we've had some issues with them over the years, the phone themselves have been pretty stout. They're they're a really strong phone. The uh, XP5S seems to be just as strong so far. Uh, but again, time will tell on that, and, and uh, we'll we'll uh, I'll keep you updated and ask any questions if you have them, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can.